Hello everybody. Happy New Year. I hope it's a much better one than last year for everyone out there. As most of you are already aware, because I've mentioned this in a previous announcement video, but my team and I, we are building a virtual museum of the RMS Lusitania, the famous Cunard passenger liner that was torpedoed and sunk during the First World War. We've been working on the project for a little more than a year now, and I wanted to give everybody some recent updates. Now, if you follow my page on Facebook, HFX Studios, you will have seen a couple of posts here and there over the last few weeks, especially of screenshots of what we are doing. But I wanted to break that down a little bit further, as well as introduce some of the team to you. And as a quick reminder, this is being done on our own time and on our own dime. We're not following any formal schedule, but we are hoping to be releasing this soon. I appreciate all of the support that has been offered and given to this project. I've gotten a few emails asking if they can financially contribute to it. We don't want that at the moment. We definitely appreciate that. As I said, we are doing this on our own dime. If you're excited about it, please consider purchasing it when it is finished. It will be available on Steam. We're developing this in Unreal Engine, and we've been modeling much of the ship, and in fact, a lot of the ship, and, and, or at least everything that we intend to make of the ship, is nearly completed. We're refining it, we're adding some more detail here and there, and we're optimizing it, but at this point, most of the remaining work is getting those models into Unreal Engine so that they can be processed and elements added to bring them to life. One of the spaces in Engine that we all on the team agree is the most visually phenomenal is the first class dining saloon. It's so different from what we're used to seeing of other liners of the era, and this is the first time that that space truly comes back to life. As far as what we plan to include in the experience, you're gonna be able to see most of the public spaces in first and third class. Unfortunately, second class is off the table at the moment, although we can dream. On A deck, and on the Lusitania, that is what you would think of as the boat deck, the very top deck. On A deck, you're gonna be able to experience basically all of the public spaces. In the forward are passenger first class corridors. After that is the reading and writing room. After that, is the top deck of the main stairwell, which you can go all the way down from top to bottom, all the way down to E deck. And after that is the lounge, after that is the smoke room, and after that is the veranda cafe. You'll be able to explore all of them and learn about each of them and what happened in these rooms. At the bottom of the stairwell, you'll be able to explore the first class dining saloon, as I mentioned prior, as well as various corridors and a couple of cabins. Jumping down to third class, we're going to be including the general room and the smoke room, as well as the large corridor and, and semi-external promenade going around there. We actually have all of the public third-class spaces modeled, but the places like the saloon and the other corridors are going to have to wait until after launch if we want to get this out at a reasonable date. My main priority for these spaces, which will be seen in an update following the launch, is third class. Third cabin aboard the Lusitania was greatly undocumented. The addition of these spaces in future updates to follow the launch of our experience will allow for the player to virtually set foot within these practically unknown interiors and experience them for the first time in 106 years. These spaces will include areas such as the elegantly crafted third class dining saloon, her several third class cabin staircases, and cabins. Interior spaces for this section of the ship will span over three entire decks, where all spaces of course will be connected. I am at the moment chipping away at small additions that need to be made for various areas throughout the Lusitania, mainly smaller details. Although small and seemingly insignificant, a ton of work is being put into these models by everybody, including I myself. After all, we believe that it is the little details that count. You'll be able to explore the entire exterior of the ship, every deck, every promenade, and you'll be able to fly around it and really see how that ship looked. Many of the base models were made by Lucas Gustafsson, but Liam Sharp has been taking some of those models, refining them and optimizing them for the engine, as well as building some additional spaces from scratch. Practically all of the larger models, such as her elegant and beautifully crafted public spaces, are finalized and ready for Levi to work in the engine with. There are a fair amount of interior spaces that will be seen within the experience that are rather obscure in regards to its documentation. Spaces such as the first class corridors, for an example, were never photographed in its entirety, 
although with the assistance of detailed deck plans and profile drawings of the vessel, the seemingly impossible task of modeling an unphotographed space is made extraordinarily simple on my own end. As with any process, the more you do it, the more refined and efficient one becomes at it. When me and Liam first started work to work on the ship, it was very much a trial and error and system on the best way to approach it and making all the interiors interact proper. As each space was finished, starting with the bridge, we became more and more refined at it in finding ways to get better textures on the models and to bring out detail, especially with roof molding. Once all the spaces are finished, we are going to go back and quickly change some of the models so that we are able to get better normal and bump maps to make the models stand out just a little bit more, as while they look great right now, these quick changes can make a huge difference. It's going to be a great resource for anybody who wants to study or model the ship or learn about what happened during the sinking. We're actually starting up the animation of her demise. Levi Rourke is the lead programmer on this. And about two years ago, he and I wanted to make a real-time sinking animation of the Lusitania. So we actually put a lot of time and effort and research into all of the events and have a good idea as to how they should turn out. On the exterior of the ship, we've been adding new elements that sort of bring life to it. Lusitania, honestly, in her last couple of years, was a filthy ship on the outside. And we're able to bring rust and algae and moss and all sorts of other things to the hull to make it look like a war-torn, well-battered and well-used vessel that's plying the seas and is basically one of the last ones that a passenger can actually use to get from America to Europe. The main first class stairwell has been one of the most difficult parts of the ship to complete. We are including shear and camber both inside and out of the ship. And when working with the stairs which span five decks and go the whole width of the ship, it's a bit of a nightmare. You have to line it up with portholes and with the, with the strakes outside and with the framework. So that has taken the most time of all spaces. In fact, I was speaking to Levi earlier, he would like to have done the two-story first-class dining saloon twice rather than do the stairs once. Emma's been working on the textures. In the first announcement video, you actually saw her hand painting with oils one of the first-class paintings, and that is now in the engine. And you can actually see how we went from the oil painting, a physical asset, to an in-engine asset that we're using to bring this ship back to life. And we've actually already got offers from people asking if they could buy that painting. Mike Brady of Ocean Liner Designs has actually been putting in countless hours to make one massive texture and light map to bring details into the hull on the outside of the ship. And this allows us to include all of these details such as rivets and strakes and other little details like weathering without really taxing your machine. It's super exciting. This has been an absolute, um, an absolute dream for me to work on this project. It's a real dream come true. The Lusitania was a conventionally, conventionally built, steel-hulled steamship with thousands of, of plates that had to be individually cut and shaped and then millions, literally millions of rivet holes punched in so that they could then drive the rivets in by hand or through hydraulic riveting massively complicated process so most of the work has been in making sure that all the structural members of the ship line up. There's actually been a lot of reverse engineering of the ship uh, involved in this process because although we've got a lot of fantastic technical and GA drawings of the, the general layout of the ship and her, her hull, there's really not a lot out there on the, the placement of the hull plates and the rivets and what have you so we've been using a lot of uh, very high resolution photographs and uh, just plotting in where things go and where they line up. It's been a huge process, but nothing compared to the real thing. I mean, it really is testament to the, the thousands of, of shipyard workers who assembled these ships and put them together. So uh, what's involved a lot in this process is mapping out the locations of frames along the hull of the ship, because between those frames would be cut your portholes, and then lining up with the frames you'd have things like doublers, these massive plates on the hull reinforcing the ship from uh, bending or cracking during high seas, and then running the entire length of the strength deck, maybe about 600, 500 or 600 feet of, of hull, you've got these huge bulb-headed rivets, almost millions of them, um, strengthening the deck and reinforcing uh, the hull there, again, to prevent cracking when the ship was cresting huge waves. So it's just a ton of detail. And so it's been a real painstaking process, mapping out where all of this goes, and then assembling it. 
and we're really excited to, uh, to depict Lusitania's exterior in this amount of detail because I don't think, uh, in, at least in a digital format like this, it's been, uh, it's been done to this level of detail yet. So yeah, hugely, hugely uh, exciting, a massive amount of work, but uh, definitely worth it, I think, in the end. Lusitania means a lot to a lot of people for different reasons, and although she is uh, perhaps not so well known as Titanic, she really holds a special place in history, and so for me, being able to even bring her back to life from the outside in this way has been extremely exciting, and I'm really grateful to be able to, uh, to work on the project. Some ships, I think, that deserve a posthumous life, you know, even if it's only in computer cinema. So I'm very glad that it, Lusitania's numbers come up at last, and uh, you know, let's uh, let's hope that she proves to be as popular as Titanic. Now, still to do, there aren't actually many spaces left on the ship that we have to get into the engines. What's left is furniture and other elements and a couple more textures. We also have a few other surprises up our sleeve. And once that's all done, we're gonna do one final pass for accuracy and optimization. Now, as far as optimization is concerned, I'm very pleased with where we're at right now. What all this means at the end of the day is that optimizing the models will allow us to run the game much smoother on people's computers. This has already worked well on tests we have done on the game so far, and have shown that even on semi-lower end machines, they can run the entire ship that is the outside and the inside, at max settings with little problems so far. The way in which the models were set up by me and Maya allows for a very easy and quick conversion to the models which can be used in dynamic lighting, which is what the sinking and a few other maps will require as the ship and or the lighting system will be moving over time. Another modeler who has not been mentioned yet is a man named Alex Muller, and he's been working on some of the finer details. He is a very good technical modeler, and what he's been able to do is, well, one of the very first things that he actually did was he built the Lusitania's propellers for us. Admittedly, that was one of the things that we were struggling with getting the perfect shape for, and he knocked that out. So now we actually have good propellers. He's gone on beyond that and is working on relief carvings throughout the ship to really add that bit of detail. Unfortunately, there's gonna be some parts of the ship where we have fine, beautiful, intricate details and other parts where it's gonna be a little sparser. We are a small team and we realize that some things are just not attainable. What really adds credibility and authenticity to this project is the historians that we've been working with extensively, both in modeling the interiors and fleshing out the events of the sinking. Stuart Williamson has been a huge asset with bringing up rare artifacts and showing us what things actually would look like tangibly. Bill Sauter has provided tons of material. And Mike Poirier, Tad Fitch, and Jay Kent Layton have so many eyewitness accounts which help us figure things out about the sinking, what was seen, what happened, and how the ship looked. Thanks to their help, we really know what the ship looked like right down to her final paint scheme in her last couple of days, better than anyone has known before. We'd also like to express our gratitude to the Lusitania Museum of Kinsale, who has helped a little bit with some of the resources and identifying certain materials, so thank you very much to them. Now, as far as when this is going to be finished, we are looking at in the next few months. As many of you know, I was the former director of Titanic Honor and Glory, and they're looking to release something in the next few months as well. I don't want to release it on their toes, and they don't want to release on our toes. We want to make sure both projects get their fair share of attention. So I've been working with Jim to see what's going on there. We would love to have this out by the anniversary in May, but please do not quote me on that, because being self-funded, Life comes up for certain team members, and things have to take a back seat sometimes. Since we are unable to commit to a fixed timeline due to this being a hobby, we are mostly saving the screenshots and publicity for when we are almost ready to launch, then get everyone hyped up about the project, as we don't want to show off the entire ship while there's still a lot of work to do. Another problem we encountered along the way that slowed us down has been the corrections. When the initial models of the exterior and interior were made, they were made with relatively small amount of historical material, which is still a lot more than what the general public has access to, but it was preventing us from getting the details we wanted. As such, following a break after Britannic's release, we started purchasing a lot of historical material that, that will help us out. This has allowed us to acquire one of the largest collections of data and info on the ship that is out there, and with this new information, we were able to see all the mistakes we had made, since we either could not see it due to low resolution of image or plans, or we just simply didn't have the info. 
As such, a lot of reworking of spaces have been done over the last year. This allows us to give you the most accurate showing of these spaces since 1915, and we know all our ship fans will be able to enjoy these spaces in all their glory. We've been working on it constantly, and have been able to get a large portion of the ship done in just over a year. One last quick note, I wanted to shout out this amazing Lusitania resource, a brand new book that came out only a couple of weeks ago by authors and team members on this project, Tad Fitch and Mike Poirier. It's about the Lusitania, but also a little bit more about the Battle of the Atlantic in the First World War. There's mention of the Britannic as well as other ships at the time. I'm dropping a link below for where you can find that. Thank you very much to everybody who has been subscribed to this channel, who has been watching the videos. My videos have actually gotten a massive spike in attention, especially one of my older videos about a local train wreck that happened about 20 minutes away from where I'm where I live. And I wanted to express my gratitude to everyone who has supported this channel, especially right from the start. And I wanted to welcome all the new subscribers. It's great to have you on board. And I'm very much looking forward to making more films and making this experience. So thank you very much. I hope everyone has a great new year. And also follow HFX Studios on Facebook for a little bit more frequent updates. Thank you very much.